Let's get some analysis and other insights from my colleagues now. First, our political editor, Andrew Clennell, about the policies and some of the politics tonight, Andrew. Well, Kieran, welcome to Jim Chalmers' Robin Hood budget. He's taxing the rich and giving to the poor, but not taxing so much as to endanger the next election. More of that in a moment. Let's talk about the bottom line first. This is a budget which produces a $4 billion surplus for this year, 22-23, the first surplus in 15 years and a small enough deficit for next year to put Jim Chalmers in reach of a second surplus, 13.9 billion deficit. And even calling next year a deficit is based on a forecast of economic growth dropping from 3.5% this year to 1.5% next financial year before recovering to 2.5% in 25-26. That is some slowdown predicted for next year. The Treasurer also claims that inflation is expected to fall from 6% this year to 3.25% next year. After 24-25, the deficits get bigger at 35 billion, 36 billion and 28 billion. But with the inflation train the most dominant issue in our economy, what most people will be interested in from tonight's budget is the cost of living relief. And as Sky News revealed on Sunday, that includes a $40 permanent rise in job seeker and youth allowance per fortnight. It also includes a rise of 15% or $31 a fortnight in rent assistance. As announced Monday, the maximum age at which children have to be for single parents to get the single parent pension has been lifted from 8 to 14. And over 55s will get a higher rate of job seeker traditionally given to over 60s. There is the long-awaited electricity bill relief that was promised in December. $500 off your bills if you receive some form of government benefit, either family tax benefit or a pension. That's for five million households, the Treasurer says. But there is also this forecast buried in the budget papers. The budget in October predicted power prices would rise 50%. After the government reacted with gas and coal price caps, the budget papers now say, quote, average national retail electricity prices are now forecast to rise by around 10% in 23-24, much lower than the early estimate of 36% without the government's intervention. And there is what Jim Chalmers calls the centrepiece of the budget. On Medicare, the government says it is, quote, delivering the largest increase to the bulk billing incentive ever. That's $3.5 billion to help GPs provide free consultations to around 11.6 million eligible Australians, including children of everyone, pensioners and other concession card holders. Jim Chalmers within Labor is seen as a bit of a tax and spend guy, and there is a fair bit of Robin Hood, as I said, to this budget, because he is introducing some tax measures and giving to the poor those on benefits. This is a good budget if your household is on less than 160 grand a year. Otherwise, it's about spending restraint. The middle class benefits more from the stage three tax cuts, which are due to come into effect in 24-25. They do not get one mention in this budget. At his press conference in the lockup, the Treasurer said under budget rules, he did not have to put them in the budget papers because he's not changing policy on them. But he said they were worth $69 billion over the forward estimates. But there are plenty of tax changes here and they have been rolled out over several weeks to minimise the controversy around them. There's a 15% tax imposed on large multinationals if they are paying less tax in other jurisdictions. This is based on an OECD proposal and raises $370 million over four years. There is a tax audit crackdown. The Treasurer claims that extending the Personal Income Tax Compliance Program and GST Compliance Program will raise $9 billion. The passenger movement charge goes from 60 bucks to 70. The government has already flagged getting hold of 2.4 billion over five years from changes to the petroleum and resource rent tax. And it has announced it will reduce superannuation tax concessions to people with super balances of more than $3 million. The health minister also flagged an increase in tobacco tax of 5% a year over three years. And there are, there are increases in visa charges for those moving to the country, including to study. The increases range from 6% to 15% for visitor visas and up to 40% extra for business visas. Now, the Treasurer claims debt now will be much lower than forecast and much of that is pinned on the new capping growth that the government has announced for the NDIS. The budget papers say, quote, the substantial improvement in the medium term fiscal outlook since the October budget largely reflects the upwards revision to projected tax receipts, lower interest payments due to lower debt levels and interest rates and moderation in growth of NDIS costs. Elsewhere in the budget, an unlimited instant asset write-off for most businesses to claim the cost of their equipment introduced by the Morrison government has been trimmed to a $20,000 cap 
and it now only applies to small businesses who reap 10 million or less. There's also a small business energy incentive of 20 grand. There is 4.5 billion over 10 years for AUKUS, including 4.2 billion to establish and operate a new Australian submarine agency. There is also $1 billion towards low-cost loans for double glazing, solar panels and other improvements to make energy efficiency in homes better. There is also $2 billion for a hydrogen head start program, an investment in that cleaner form of energy. Tax receipts, excluding new policies and GST, have been revised up $114 billion over five years. But almost 60% of that upgrade occurs in 22-23 and 23-24. There is another big player in this rosy picture in the short term. Net overseas migration. The budget says it will be 400,000 this year, 315,000 next year, and is then predicted to go back to 235,000 a year. So we are being told it's the biggest budget turnaround in history. It's also the biggest net migration figure in history this, this year. Now I ask you, is that a coincidence? That migration and a resultant increase in tax receipts has helped Jim Chalmers deliver a surplus and could help him deliver another. But the Treasurer has been at pains to point out that NDIS and defence costs are rising and there is a challenging budget situation to come. Jim Chalmers will use every opportunity available in coming days to talk about reducing Liberal debt and to point out that he did what his coalition opponents could not in nine years of government, produce a budget surplus. If the ghosts of Wayne Swan and his promised surpluses that never materialised do haunt this Treasurer and former Swan staffer, he's gone some way towards exercising those ghosts tonight. And the Treasurer also claims because his cost of living package targets the rising costs of electricity and rent, it will not add to inflation, but will reduce inflation by three quarters of a percentage point. That will be hotly debated with the opposition in days to come, Kieran.